and um, I promise your family will love them. One quick sip of coffee, though. Need that to keep me going these days, that's for sure. All right, twice baked potatoes. First of all, splurge and get the big, big, nice, big, you know, big baking potatoes, the big guys here. And then I like to drizzle them with some olive oil. And if you ever notice at the steakhouses, the really nice steakhouses that you'll go to, there's a little bit of salt already on the baked potato. So I like to drizzle them with olive oil, just kind of rub them in there with my, my hands, and then take some kosher salt, sprinkle them with a little bit of salt, and then use a fork to poke a couple holes in them. You ever had an exploding potato? That's not a good thing. So just a couple of holes, and this, these actually can go right on the rack or on a cookie sheet, it's up to you. And you notice how big these potatoes are? You need to preheat the oven about 375, 350, somewhere in there, maybe even up to 400 if you have one of those ovens that doesn't really crank, and bake those for a good hour to an hour and a half. Ours take a, took a good long time here um, because they are such big potatoes. Now at that point, they come out of the oven and you see that nice little bit of salt and that olive oil. That's just a great way to start, start it out. So we're gonna get these in the oven. My family loves baked potato, just loves them. And we're gonna take a knife and we're gonna make a little canoe. And in order to make them look really pretty, you really have to do it leave quite a bit of potato in the inside of these. Um, otherwise, your potato, will, the presentation won't be that great. So you take the insides, the inners of this warm potato. You know what? Hey, give me a bowl. I'm going to make some potato skins. Kids love those. Bake those up with some little olive oil and some bacon. Those are good. Don't throw those out. So you kind of scoop out the insides, but still leave some of the potato in there. If you scoop it out too much, it just won't hold up. It won't be a real nice shell. So that's what you're looking for. And Ann did it for me already here. Thank you, Ann. So you get the idea. Off with the top. Don't cut it in half because then you just won't have enough space to put everything. So kind of cut a third of it off and get in here. Scoop some of that out. And here you go. I always order when I go to a restaurant and they have their potato choice. If there's a twice baked potato on the menu, I always go for that. And you know what? Sometimes they're really good and sometimes they're not. They're not. So, um, but I'm always willing to try. All right. Now, we're going to take the insides of those potatoes and really dress them up. I'm going to warm some milk here, and just like when you were making mashed potatoes, if you take cold milk, I'm just going to warm it for a little bit in the microwave, and uh, you add cold milk to hot potatoes, it's very gluey. And you need to do this while these potatoes are warm, by the way. And we don't want gluey. We want as fluffy as we can get. So I've got some sour cream, and I'm going to attempt to do this, and I always started out doing it with a hand potato masher and then if I need to I'll use the mixer but sometimes when you use the mixer you can over mix and you get gluey potatoes and nobody wants gluey potatoes. I've got some softened butter in here. I may even melt the butter a little bit too. So while I'm doing this, how's your hot, how are the hot things going? Are, the, are you making the cookies? Ireland and I had a wonderful weekend and we baked cookies and made a total mess, but it was so much fun. But I hope you're you're surviving. I know it's get, kind of getting close here. I'm starting to get a little nervous. So I'm going to add a little bit of milk. And I'm not going to give you exact ingredients or, you know, on the recipe, it'll tell you how much milk, but I really like to eyeball it because, you know, everybody's going to use different sized potatoes. Salt and pepper, definitely season that up. Some of my melted butter. This wasn't quite soft enough, and I'm going to go ahead and right melt it. 
I find if the liquid is, the milk's warm and the butter's warm, sometimes I'll melt the butter and milk together. It just will yield a lot fluffier, more wonderful potato. Got to get some sour cream in here. And one of our viewers just said, Amy, you use a lot of sour cream, and I'm, I'm with you, I do. Why not try using yogurt in some of your recipes? So I'm going to do that, actually. But it's the holidays. We're going to use sour cream in this recipe. So, but I guess um, there are some you know, Greek yogurts, some wonderful yogurts that actually taste a lot like sour cream. All right. That looks perfect. I'm excited about that. Not gluey at all. Did not need the hand mixer. Now, a little bit of heavy cream in here just to make it nice and rich. You can leave that out if you want and just do straight up milk. A little bit of cheese in the mixture, and then of course we're going to put some on top too. So a little bit of cheese in, a little bit of bacon in. This is just crumbled cooked bacon so that it'll be all nice and, and melty in the potatoes. And then we'll put some on top, as I said. All right, so now we just scoop. Jocelyn, are you drooling back there? Yes, she says. I know, I do. I know when I make a recipe that my crew is going to dive into. They're picky. Whenever I do something too gourmet, it's not going to happen. But twice-baked potatoes, oh, yeah. Better make plenty of these. They'll be out here. And you all bought these? Except for the onion. I know, I'll, have to, I'll leave the onion off of yours. The scallions that go on top. She said, what onion? They're worse than my kids, these guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> Not you, Greg. Greg will eat just about anything. <laughs> I've gotten two thanks a lot in my ear. <laughs> Wear this little thing in my ear so they, right in here, they, they talk to me. <laughs> All right, so just mound that potato in there. Yum. And then, so you can get these all done ahead of time. Get them out of the way. Say you're serving this for Christmas Eve, and that's what we always do on Christmas Eve. Our, our dinner on Christmas Eve is either a tenderloin or usually a prime rib roast and twice baked potatoes. And so, you know, get that all done Christmas Eve morning. You, you come home from Christmas Eve mass, pop these in the oven, um, and they don't take long at all to warm up. So more cheddar cheese on top. Or this bacon, and you can do some scallions. I'd put scallions on the grown-ups' potatoes, um, but probably leave them off the kids. And because I've got a lot of kids on my crew here, or they eat like kids, we'll leave the scallions off. Just for you guys, it's an early Christmas present. How about that? And that's all you're getting, too. <laughs> They're giving me attitude today. They're sassy. So there you go. Hot out of the oven. Um, depending on if you you know you're baking them right away, they're going to take you know 20 to 30 minutes to to heat up. If you're taking them from the refrigerator and putting them in the oven, they may take a little longer than that. But um, best ever twice baked potatoes, and mine have some scallions on top. So how about them apples? Recipes on our website. You can also pick up the recipe at any festival of foods. Oh.